If you've been removed from the United States, you are barred from reentry for 5, 10, or 20 years or permanently. The length of the ban depends on the circumstances. In some cases, you have a permanent bar if you illegally reenter the U.S. or try to do so. An aggravated felony conviction also bars you for a lifetime. When you're inadmissible under INA 212A9A or 212A9C, you will need a consent to reapply for admission into the United States. This is also known as the I-212 waiver. Hello and welcome. My name is Diane Williams and I'm a U.S. immigration attorney. I can help you prevent or overcome visa and green card refusals, even if you're inadmissible, as long as you qualify for a waiver or reconsideration. In this episode, I'll talk about the consent to reapply for admission or the I-212 waiver. If you are barred from the U.S. due to A, a removal order, B, an illegal re-entry or attempted illegal re-entry to the U.S. on or after April 1, 1997, or an aggravated felony conviction, you will need a CTR. How exactly do you get this relief? Let's dive in. Let's review the 5, 10, 20 year and permanent bars that require a consent to reapply. The first is the five year bar. You are barred for five years if you're removed by U.S. Customs and Border Protection at the U.S. Port of Entry or by an immigration judge as an arriving alien. The second is the 10 year bar. You are barred for 10 years if you were A. ordered removed by an immigration judge other than as an arriving alien. B. You failed to leave the U.S. within the voluntary departure period granted by an immigration judge. C. You departed the U.S. while you're in removal proceedings. Or D. You left the U.S. while a removal order was in effect. The third is the 20-year bar if you were ordered removed more than once, whether as an arriving alien or not. The fourth is the permanent bar if you have an aggravated felony conviction. Examples are controlled substance trafficking, fraud causing a loss of over $10,000, a theft offense with a sentence of at least one year. The fifth is a permanent bar if you illegally re-enter the U.S. or tried to do so after you accrued more than one year of unlawful presence in the U.S. Six is the permanent bar if you illegally re-enter the U.S. or tried to do so after you were issued a removal order. When any of these bars apply to you, you may not receive any visa or lawful admission to the U.S. unless you first get the Consent to Reapply or I-212 waiver. The CTR is different from the I-601 Immigrant Waiver and the 212-D3 Non-Immigrant Waiver, which serve a different purpose. Now I'll review frequently asked questions about the Consent to Reapply or I-212 waiver. Question number one, do I need a visa with a consent to reapply? The consent to reapply is not a travel document and does not by itself authorize you to enter the United States. It is not a standalone application for relief and usually has to be filed with a request for a visa or lawful admission. For example, if you seek to become a permanent resident of the United States, you must otherwise qualify for an immigrant visa. If you want to enter the U.S. to work or study, you need to otherwise qualify for the right visa, such as the H-1B or the F-1. The visa or lawful admission will not be granted until you first receive the consent to reapply. In most cases, you may request a CTR whenever you need the visa or lawful admission. But if you seek to immigrate to the U.S., that is, become a permanent resident, and have an INA 212A9C bar, you must wait abroad for at least 10 years before you may file for the CTR. A 9C1 bar is when you have an illegal re-entry or attempted illegal re-entry after accruing more than one year of unlawful presence. A 9C2 bar is when you have an illegal re-entry or attempted illegal re-entry after being issued a removal order. Question number two, who qualifies for the consent to reapply? Unlike the I-601 immigrant waiver for unlawful presence and fraud or willful misrepresentation, 
The I-212 does not require you to have a qualifying relative who will suffer extreme hardship if you are not admitted to the United States. Still, having close family ties in the U.S. is a favorable factor in some cases. When deciding whether to grant the CTR requests, the officer will weigh the favorable against the unfavorable factors. Favorable factors include unusual hardship to your U.S. citizen or permanent resident relatives, yourself or your employer in the U.S., two, your family responsibilities, three, length of lawful presence in the U.S. and the status you held during that presence, four, your respect for law and order, five, your good moral character, such as lack of criminal history, six, reformation and rehabilitation, e.g. no recent criminal offenses, seven, eligibility for a waiver of other inadmissibility bars, eight, the need for your services in the U.S., nine, considerable passage of time since your deportation or immigration violation, such as five years or more, 10, absence of significant negative factors. Unfavorable factors include, one, lack of close family ties or hardships, two, serious or repeated violations of U.S. immigration laws or willful disregard of other laws, three, signs of lack of character, such as multiple criminal offenses, four, likelihood that you will seek U.S. welfare or become a public charge, five, poor physical or mental condition unless there is a need for treatment in the U.S., which could be a favorable factor, six, unauthorized employment in the U.S., seven, your admission would be contrary to the welfare, safety, or security of the U.S., eight, recent deportation or immigration violation, especially within the last year. Question number three, what do I need to prove to get the consent to reapply? There is no formal interview before an immigration officer in a CTR application. If you're filing for the CTR at the U.S. Consulate or at the CBP pre-clearance office, you might get a few minutes to talk about your case. But even then, they don't make the final decision. The CBP ARO or USCIS has the final say. Here's how you make a real difference. Present documentary evidence and written testimony showing the favorable factors outweigh the unfavorables. Examples are 1. Your own personal declaration explaining the changed circumstances, rehabilitation, remorse for your immigration violation or criminal offense, and current positive factors. 2. Affidavits from friends, relatives, and colleagues describing your good character and hardships you and your family will face if you're not admitted to the U.S. 3. Police clearance reports showing no criminal history ever or in recent past. 4. Employment verification letters, professional licenses, proof of business ownership, and records of community leadership. Whether you seek to enter the U.S. for temporary visits or as a permanent resident affects the factors you must prove. Question number four. How do I file for the consent to reapply? An official Form I-212 application and filing fee must be submitted only in certain cases. I'll summarize the filing instructions as of the date of this recording. Note that this is subject to change, so you need to double-check the instructions at the time of filing. Whether you file the CTR request with USCIS, the U.S. Consulate, or U.S. Customs and Border Protection depends on the type of entry or visa you seek and why you need the waiver. Here are some examples. 1. Immigrant visa applicants who also need a Form I-601 waiver. File the forms I-212 and I-601 with the USCIS Phoenix lockbox, which will forward your applications to the Nebraska Service Center. 2. Immigrant visa applicants who do not require a Form I-601 waiver. File the form I-212 with the USCIS field office that has jurisdiction over where your removal proceedings were held. The same field office will adjudicate the form I-212 application. Note. If you are an immigrant visa applicant with INA 212A9C1 bar, 
you must be outside the U.S. and wait 10 years abroad before filing the Form I-212 with USCIS. 3. K or V non-immigrant visa applicants. File the Form I-212 with USCIS Phoenix lockbox, which will forward your application to the Nebraska Service Center. 4. Non-immigrant visa applicants other than K, T, U, or V visa applicant. File for the consent to reapply at the U.S. consulate where you apply for the visa. The consular officer has to recommend the request for approval before it is sent to the CBP Admissibility Review Office for a decision. 5. Non-immigrant visa applicants with INA 212A9C1 bar. If Section 212A9C11, that is the 9C1 bar, is the only inadmissibility ground, and more than 10 years have passed, file the Form I-212 with USCIS. If Section 212A9C12, that is the 9C2 bar, applies, you must wait 10 years before you may file the Form I-212 with USCIS. Non-immigrant visa applicants with the 9C1 bar, but not the 9C2 bar, may file for the consent to reapply through the U.S. consulate at any time. 6. Non-immigrants who do not need a visa, such as a Canadian citizen seeking to enter as a temporary visitor. File the Form I-212 in person at a CBP-designated port of entry or CBP preclearance office which will then forward it to the CBP ARO for decision. 7. Green card applicants who are physically present in the U.S. and are inadmissible only under INA 212A9A. File the Form I-212 with the USCIS office that has jurisdiction over the Form I-485 adjustment application. The same office will adjudicate both the I-212 and the I-485. This is just a summary. It does not cover every single type of CTR case. It can get really confusing, so consult an immigration attorney regarding the filing process. Question number five. Do I need an attorney to file for the consent to reply? You may file for the CTR without counsel, but you should at least consult a U.S. immigration attorney to review whether you actually have a bar, whether the CTR is the correct relief, and whether you are eligible for it. An experienced attorney can explain what evidence to submit and where and when to file your application. The attorney can prepare a legal memorandum describing how you qualify for the relief and deserve to get it. With the right counsel, you maximize the chance of approval and minimize the risk of a denial or rejection of your application. The consent to reply for admission, or I-212 waiver, excuses you from the INA 212A9A or 212A9C bars, but it doesn't cover every single inadmissibility ground. Sometimes you need both a CTR and an I-601 immigrant waiver, or a CTR and a 212D3 non-immigrant waiver. It really depends on the type of inadmissibility bar that you have and whether you seek to come to the U.S. as an immigrant or non-immigrant. If you found this content helpful, hit the like, subscribe, or share buttons. For more information on the consent to reply or other waivers, you can hop on over to my website and check out my immigration blog. If you need specific advice or guidance on the CTR process, call me or contact me through my website at dianewilliamslaw.com.